All right, so let's get rolling. So this morning, let's just go to the trade room on the indicator that we have out to all the members. And if you don't have uh, a Ninja Trader, it's okay. You can come in and view my Ninja Trader. And this morning, I went over at uh, uh, 8.30 to, to 9 o'clock this morning, I went over how we had resistance. So I specifically made, uh, we've had these supply and demand lines specifically um, made for this specific Uni Rinko bar or specific Rinko bars in general. So you don't have to use the Uni Rinko bar specifically. You can use your own Rinko bar. I know we have our own bar type that we created. You can use that one. Uh, we like to use the Uni bar in the room. Um, it's on our download page. It's free to download. And then, or you can use any Rinko bar you use. But these, these uh, let's go over this before we get into the strategy and the indicator. Uh, these cyan lines or these blue lines are what's called order block or supply demand. So if you look what supply demand is, supply demand is basically where order blocks have come in from a previous support or resistance level. What does that mean? That means, and I was shown an example this morning, that means if we have, um, if we have price that is moving up, I'll just show you for an example like this. Let's say price moves up on a block and we're moving higher. Let's say on a one minute chart or a five minute chart and this sets a higher high and then the next sets a higher high Where's it at? So let's say you have three bars back to back. Whether you use a one minute chart, five minute chart, 30 minute chart, 16 minute chart, it's the same, same thing, or Rinko bars. So if you see this, this is how supply and demand lines are created. So when these levels fire, these uh, supply and demand lines, they fire based upon a previous order block. Now order block is supply and demand. So this is what an order block is, is if we're rallying really hard, that's called there's a uh, imbalance in orders. So there's an imbalance in orders and that creates what creates what's called price inefficiency. So when you get price inefficiency, that creates an opportunity to retest that level because if you're a hedge fund or if you're a bank or if you're a professional trader that does big blocks or what have you, and you're trying to get long, let's say the S&P or long a stock or long any type of future, and you see this market is getting into an imbalance stage. So if you get three successful higher highs like this, it creates an order balance. So how these supply demands are marked on your chart automatically is if you that you take the previous high and low of the previous bar, and that is your supply line, so or, or demand line. I'm sorry. So then you can project this out where this order efficiency started, and that will be a buy on the retest. So what happens is, let's say if you're a big bank and you're trying to get long major contracts on the futures market or stock or etc., and you can't just buy everything at the market. Uh, you know, obviously, because price would just go right through the roof. And so what happens is, is when they start buying big blocks, our big blocks are coming into the market. Uh, this is this calls an inefficiency in the market, or what's called an order block. An order block is where you have a retest of this level then, because they can't get long all at once. So what they'll do is they'll retest that level, and then we'll have what's called an order block retest long. And a lot of people know this as a fair value gap trade where you come back down see an order block and a fair value cap for continuation so what I've done is is now with this new update I got out to you guys I specifically have it where it shows where these order block levels are at any type of um, minute charts Renko bars whatever you use it shows where the order block is so what we established this morning on the microphone I said here's where the order block is here we got resistance here at the supply line and you see our Renko bar hit its head hit his head, hit his head. And I specifically said, what happens is, is you'll see it break through and get an acceleration in price, and you'll see a retest of the order block, and that will be your entry right when you get a pull-in bar. Well, if you look at it, it went right to my zone. That was the entry of the order block, and then uh, my target was the next order block. The supply order block was 4148. So we have potential, and I've marked these down. I put them in the room. You can scroll back on the chat, and I put them in the room. What time did I put those in? I put the exact levels in at, uh, what time was that? And if you scroll back up in the 8 o'clock range somewhere, I put the exact numbers in for you. I put in a break of uh, 4104 and a quarter. I said if we break that, our target is the next order block, which is 4148. Obviously, you see that. The pull-in was a high of that bar, 4110. Went to 48. That's a 38 S&P point move, just taking order block to order block. So I know I don't talk a lot about supply demand, 
but these demand lines were specifically created for these order blocks that show where supply and demand uh, rest. So if you when you get into your into the into your charts and whatever market you put up, you can skinny this down and see where the the the, the big gaps are in the market. So what I did is I skinny this down this morning and we saw a big gap. We saw a big gap here in the market. There's no resistance. So with market profile, these are called low volume node areas where it's a path of least resistance. So you're going to see price really accelerate. Vice versa, if we would have got below 78 today, and this is valid tomorrow and the next day also, if we get below 78, I see a big gap below and I see this market going down almost down to what, 30, uh, 4,000 first and 39.50. So I see about a 78 point hit on the S&P if it breaks 78. So you can use these order blocks in the past to go back. Now, I don't go more than 10 days back. So I go 10 days back. This is a 12020 on the Udi Rinko. And uh, a 10 days back is suffice to find out where the order blocks are. But you can see how I did that uh, before this even happened this morning. So I just want to go over that, make sure you guys are on the same page and you understand what I'm talking about. about you can use my supply demand lines that comes with the software to find where these resting order blocks are that creates an inefficiency in price where these hedge funds and, and, and so on, and they have to retest that for continuation, or it's called a fair value um, uh, a fair value trade. So, you know, that's something that we did this morning in the room. That was my target. It worked out great. We're good to go. On the way up, uh, you can have, I said we break out of that gap. You can have anything above 40 was a buy. This one started out at 40 above a buy. It started out, and then it came right back down for the retest. This one obviously worked out great. This is above 40. The bull, so the strategy picked up both of those. The strategy picked up this one. The automated strategy picked up this one also into the close. So I'm going to show you how you can see if the market is stronger or weaker when you get into these big gaps in the market. So if you look at these lines right here before we get into anything, uh, this is on the automated strategy, which I'll show you in a second. I'll show you how to use strategy runner. But you see this line I have at 65, the red line, and I have this at 40. So this zone indicator says we're buying, right? The green zone means we're buying pullbacks at the zone. All right, or we're, we're, or we're taking momentum trades above the zone. Your best momentum trades will be when it's away from the zone on shallow retracements. As long as I don't break back inside of this 38 level, this, in, this upper zone, and I'll show you on the NASDAQ futures, it works well like this too, is that as long as I don't break inside of it, we got serious momentum to the upside. So what we can try to do then is we can try to buy pullbacks then with this oscillator below, which I have in the strategy. So this oscillator tells me if you're manually trading that, that this is a pullback and it's above 40. So above 40, I can put that in my strategy and the strategy would go along with my ATR trail. If it is below, if it's in a downtrend and these zones were red, I could put my cell there below 65 or whatever number you want, anything below there, it would short, right? Well, obviously we were in a bull run today. I said that we're looking for a, um, we're looking for an order block retest long try to fill this gap, and try to get long any momentum trades away from this. And when I say away from the zone, you can actually do this with the NASDAQ futures also. One of my favorite trades is shallow retracements with this zone indicator I have. So you can specify the exact zone you want. So what I have, I have three lines on here. I have a 38 is my outer zone. Then I have a 30 and a 32. So what I want to do is I want to only go with green zone trend if I'm buying or selling the NASDAQ futures. Now this is a 125.25, 125.25 on the NASDAQ. The best trade you're going to find is when you get into uh, away from the zone on a pullback. So as the price is moving up above the zone, you went above the zone, it's pulling back, it's still green. You don't want to violate it like this. You don't want to get below. You, you don't want to see it closing like this over here or this over here. That's not a valid buy. You want to keep it above the zone or at the zone above that 30, 32. So you can see this is away from it. I got two red bars on the retracement. I happen to be above bullish stance. It's above 40, which this is 65, so it's way above. My 40 line would be here. I don't have it on here. My 40 blue line would be right there. So you can see the pullback, the blue line right there that it told you right there above 40. So the it's very bullish, but you notice how price never got into the zone. 
we get a reversal bar there, and that is your long. So you can do this with the futures also, NASDAQ futures also. It comes up, as long as they don't go below the 38s, a shallow retracement, another nice long. So you can use this to your advantage on buying and selling, uh, um, buying and selling the, um, these futures contracts with the zone indicator. Now, if you're going to buy something like this, this is a 25 Renko, so you're going to have to at least have your stop below the size of that Renko bar. And one thing you don't want to do with this system, and this is how you educate traders, you don't want to buy market or sell market. So if you're buying, because these Renko bars like to retrace, so after this buy signal came up and a blue bar printed, and this is what the strategy does also, is that you can, you want to buy, right? You want to buy the bid. You want to buy the bid when the blue bar comes up, if you're buying. You want to have your automated, uh, you want to have your automated indicator in, your trail, your stop trail automatically in. You know, you can put your first target at 12, what have you, your stop loss, and then you can put your second target out to 100 ticks. And then once you hit that button, it automatically does everything for you. When price starts moving up and you get long, right? So it's going to buy the bid. You can do it that way. Or you can use hotkeys, and a hotkey can have it in to retrace it by four ticks on your F function. So your hotkeys, you can go and hit F, let's say, six for buy, and it will retrace four ticks after, you, after it turns blue. So it turns blue. It fills right there in four ticks. So there would be your fill on the retracement right there and then your stop loss would be right below this bar as price moves along on chart trader now the strategy will do it for you automatically the automated strategy if you're manually trading this here's the best way to do it just trail two price bars back two rank of bars back so once you're filled here once you're filled on a pullback whether you buy the you know buy the uh, bid up here, you buy the bid, it will be about right there, um, let's say, or if you put a limit order in. As you move up, you want to, as new price bars fill, go two bars back. So if price is moving up and price is right here, go two bars back, that's your new stop. Rest it right below the low of that Renko bar and keep chilling up. So if this is the price, let's say here, currently where it's ticking, let's say this is ticking live, then your resting stop would be two bars back, one, two, there's your resting stop. Every time it ticks, you drag your stop up. Now you can do it manually, or you can use Ninja's, eight, uh, I like using the Ninja's ATM. You can use the, the, your step one, two, three step process if you want. Or you can do it manually, and you can just bring up your chart trader, move your stop up as price moves up. My point is, is that you can do this. If you're going to take the, the best trades you're going to get with this type of system is strictly momentum. You are a momentum trader. What happens is I found, and this is after running all these strategies, so we were fortunate enough to, have, to, to be able to backtest this. And one of our colleagues in the room they helped us backtest this uh, up to 30 years. And we found out the deeper retracement you go, right, the deeper retracement you go, the more stop outs you're going to get. The shallow retracements are where it's at. And the more I did this and the more I use it in my strategy, and I'm going to share in the strategy, it's correct. So I can take the June, I mean the uh, June strategy where we have the contract rollover, which I'll show you on the March 20th contract. I'll show you every trade it's taken using Market Analyzer, and we'll see how effective these momentum plays are if you stay above the shallow zone and I'll show you how to do that now can you take deep zones yes I'll show you how you can take deep zones also but if you're trading you want to trade you don't want it to get into this this is a 30 32 and a 38 I don't want to puncture this 38 right on the way up same way with the ES when it moved up look at this Look at that buy. That buy was right there at the, uh, you, would have, you, would, you would have got filled at 20, 41, 20, 50, plus or minus a couple ticks, right? 41, 20, 50. My goal was 48 right there. It says 28 points there. It got as high as 65 at the next order block. So 65, that's 45 point move. And look how it never violated my 38. This is the inner level right here, the, the inner zone. Look how it never violated. That told you to keep buying shallow retracements. 
buy this bull right here, buy this bull here, buy this bull here in the retest, you know, you can do that. This is an FZR trade, full zone retracement there. All right. So, but you can do that also on this. So I'm just trying to show you why uh, momentum works. Where momentum dissipates is this. So this is a good momentum play. So here, if you see you are green, right, we're buying, and this is the on the NASDAQ futures, and I get below, if I'm closing below here, I don't want to buy that. I want to be above, I want to buy here because it's a blow-off rally. The strategy will take this long. I want to buy there because look at my oscillator. Is it above my bull? Yes. Look at that. That is above actually 76, 75%. So that's very bullish. Anything above 40 is bullish. Can I buy here? Yes. That's your trade. Why? Look at my oscillator. Is it above 40, the blue? Yes. It stayed above 78, I'm sorry, and the, the previous one stayed above, what, 88. So these two are really good oscillator buys with my overall zone indicator. So that's a good buy. That's a good buy. This one, look how it never violated my 38. Is this a good buy? Yes, because you're still above it. Where you get in trouble on stop outs is you get deep retracements. Here, we don't want to play around if it starts getting outside my shallow retracement if you're strictly trading momentum. Now I'm going to show you how we can do this with an automated strategy too. And I'm going to show you the uh, accuracy of it. But let's say the down, look on the downside. So here's the upside. Another great trade, 11 o'clock. Look at this. This is just, this, these are the type of trades if you're patient and wait. Look up, came down to my shallow retracement. That's a great shallow retracement to buy because it turned right at my shallow retracement, 3032. You can't let it get below price, below this level, right? Because if it does, you're going to be in trouble, right? You're going to stop out. So let me show you a sell, a sell. See how it came right up to my 38 shallow retracement. So you don't have to look for the deep 54s if you want to strictly trade momentum. And it's a good sell on the NASDAQ futures. So it will be the low there all the way down. You can trail it two bars back all the way down. Let me get you a sell. Here's another buy. You can see. You can buy that. You can buy that. That's a really good one. You can see where the good buys are. Another great buy. Never got it outside my shallow zone. This is where you're going to get in trouble with stop outs right here. This is where it likes to trend change. If you noticed, I got above here and this market goes really choppy. So it's a good way to do it. Like right now, the market's still ticking live. This should be short. If you're still trading NASDAQ futures after 4 o'clock, after 5 o'clock Eastern, there's your short right there. And it's a great short because look at my oscillator. My oscillator would be above, below 65, which is the bear. So I put this red. So it's below 65. So... There's red, right? And there's my green. So you see, it's, we're still going down on the NASDAQ futures as we talk. And my bull, which is in the strategy, and the indicator would be green. So you can see my blue, this is what it registers here. See, you see the oscillator is below 65 when it turned red. And what you do is your stop, there's your entry at this bar. So what you do is you would sell the ask. You'd sell the ask when that turns red. Your stop would be above the high of this swing high on this bar. And then you trail it two bars back. Every two bars. So if this is ticking right now, which it is, Here's where you want to place your stop. So you want to place your stop here. Two back, including the one that's ticking. There's one, two. And now you just got stopped out. All right, so there's your stop out on the trade. So if I'm looking for a trade, I want to stop right here. As it's ticking, I don't want to go above in price. It does. We don't want to mess with that for shorting. But you can see how you can trail price. That's a nice trade from here down to there. The strat now, now I'm going to show you how you can take the strategy. And it will take it from there an automated strategy, right? But you can do this manually too. Now see how we're deeper? It's a deeper retracement. It's above my zone. Is this more of a dangerous play? Yes, because the momentum is dissipating. Why? Because it didn't stop at my zone. It got through my 38 zone, all right? And that's why, and look at my oscillator. It's not below the bear line of 65. 
or the bull line over here when it's a buy to the upside or bear here. You see, you see these bears? Watch this bear. Here's three bears. Look at my oscillator below here. Watch. Look, I can tell when a possible big momentum trade is happening. See my blue oscillator? And I have this uh, set up in workspaces for you. See how it went right to the 65, guys? And look at that. These are all major sells. Sell. 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 I never violate my 38. All right? And this is a major sell here. Sell. Now do I have a major sell or buy? No. Right? So now I got green, I got green zones. So what I want to see now, as this market's ticking, I want to see a retracement no lower than this trailing zone right now. I want to see it turn red, come down to this zone, and then get a blue bar that prints and try to take this long to the upside. If it violates it and gets through it like this, then you don't touch the trade. Okay? So you can watch the oscillator. You would want the oscillator to come down. Stay above that green line. When you get a blue pull in or green pull in, I've turned it blue to make it easier on that as you can see it. And it, the oscillator should pop. Price should pop just like that also. All right. Do we understand the method, method, methodology before I get into the strategy now? Everybody understand how you can look for bull and bear runs using shallow retracements? Because if you understand this, you'll understand how to use the strategy, right? We're using the oscillator down, right? We're using this oscillator below and the zone indicator here to judge where major turning points are. Anybody got any questions on that before we move on? Anybody not understand that? Anybody not understand that? Hand me why if you guys are on the same page before I move on to the strategy. And if you don't understand, I'll explain it a little bit more to you. Everybody on the same page? You're looking for now a pullback to stay above this oscillator and stay above your lower zone. So right now, we want this to come down. The oscillator is right at 40, and you want it to turn blue right now. We're getting a deeper retracement, so it's not going to be valid. Uh, there should be, uh, David, you have a workspace for the zones. Uh, they should automatically come up. Uh, on the landing page, there's a workspace for the zones. Gerald, can you send an email to David and tell him how to put the, uh, uh, the workspace on the zones? If you want to put your own specific zones on, you mean for the NASDAQ futures, David, specifically? If you want to put it on a single chart, is that what you're saying? Okay, yeah. So when you go in, let's say you want to trade the NASDAQ futures, right? And you want to take, trade this specific trade setup that I like right here. Like right now, if it turns, it see it's standing above my zone. If it turns blue, then this would be a long side setup. It doesn't have a lot of momentum because it went up below 40, right? So the momentum dissipated. So I don't like it as much as I like this one. I like them both to match up. Zone and my oscillator match up. Because this is a triple zone. They turn red. with There's a triple trend zone. So you go in, David, and you're going to put in here on the indicator. When you get the indicator, you're going to put 38 and 38. And you can put another one in, 38, 32, and 30. 38, 38, and then put another one in, uh, add, add the indicator in again, and put 32, 30. That will give you these zones right here. All right? As you can see right now, it's not a good buy, is it? You see why it's not a good buy? You got, yeah, but you see why it's not a good buy here? See how it's breaking down through, David? You don't want to touch this buy. The momentum is dissipated because, look, it violated the area, one. Did the oscillator stay above 40? Did not, did it. That's two negatives against that momentum trade. Now, this one that just happened after hours it is away from the zone. And the oscillator stayed below the bear line, which was 65. Does that make sense, bud? Is that starting to come together? You want both of them to agree to match up on trades. So if I'm looking at these trades here, my oscillator, I, I, I cannot get above 65. I mean 38 on momentum trading. I can't get above this. If I get above this, momentum is dissipated. I don't care what futures you trade, what stock you trade. I don't care if you trade Bitcoin. I don't care if you trade soybeans, corn. Whatever you trade, options, it doesn't matter. 
the same type of methodology. You want to look for momentum in the market. So as we are red, this is red, I have a triple trend in this. If it's red, you don't want it to even come up, even touch this outer level. You want to stay below it and get a pull in. All right, touch it right on it. But you don't want to violate this and start closing outside of it because that means trends dissipated. So you want it to do that, but then you want it to turn a red reversal bar. When the oscillator on a bear is below, to me, I like 65 as a normal number. Now, some of you on the strategy will want it to only show major blow-off trades, which I'll show you in a second on Strategy Analyzer. But if you understand how it works and why momentum comes in the market, you understand that, and you'll understand how to plug in the correct strategy settings that you want. Okay? It's when you have this, right? It's when you have this, David. When you break through the zone, you broke through my outer 38 zone, starts closing above it, right? And did my oscillator stay below 65? No, it did not. So what do you do? If you're only trading momentum, then you don't take the trade. Right? You don't take the trade. We're strictly trading momentum. We want this oscillator to line up with my zones. Right? Now, the Momo strat, I have it set to not even look at the zones, only take weakness, price weakness, when the oscillator is really weak or oscillator is really strong. And then my wave zone indicator, so I'm going to show you this, another update I'm getting out to you guys. It, you can put in the levels that you want to put in. All right, so this is not a trade right here, right? Because that market is oscillating back and forth. So there's no trade here, and there's no trade here. Why? Because I never stayed inside of my zones, and my oscillator never stayed below 65 here, and never stayed above 40 on the buy here. I mean, stayed above 40 on the buy here, and it never stayed below 65 over here. Are you guys on the same page on how momentum works with my methodology before I show you the strategy? Are you understanding a little bit when you manually trade this? Everybody's starting to get this a little bit? I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to be successful on catching momentum, you don't trade any trades outside of 38, period. So I've got a 125.25 right here, right? That's pretty fast for the NASDAQ. I've actually went down to 120.20 before it's kind of fast I went as high as 135 35 the stops are too big for me I like 25 it's a good number for me some of you guys will want 30 it slows down a little bit 130 30 some of you are really quick at it and 120 20 your stops going to be a little bit smaller but I like 120 25 because it's actually tradable during the day you know it's not especially if you trade uh, 130 all the way up to uh, that 930 open when you have that London crossover this it's pretty much this speed right here it's not very fast. So my point is, is that your best trades are going to be when you get a pullback that's below these three zones. A 30, I have a 38 is my outer zone, then a, then a 30 and 32. Okay? It's when you get inside, you start breaking these zones, that's when you run into trouble. So the two strategies that I have, I have two strategies for you guys, automated strategies for this then. Manually, you can do it manually, or... You can do a what's called a Momo strat. I think Gerald calls it a Sim Momo. And then we have a wave. Sim wave. Strategy. And then we have a wave indicator. All right, so we got the Momo strategy. That's what you're looking at. Um, that I'm going to show you in a second. That's what you're going to see in a second. Then you have the Sim Wave strategy. And then we got the Wave indicator, where it's not a strategy, it's just the indicator. The indicator, you're going to be able to put your bull bear readings where the arrow fires. Where that bear arrow fires, that's where your strategy is going to fire. It's going to emulate each other. They are going to emulate each other. So, let me get this down. So, you got the Momo strategy, which I'm going to show you in a second. The difference between the Momo strategy and the Sim strategy, very simple. 
The sim wave strategy does not have my triple zones, my red zones, my green zones. It will take counter trend trades and trend trades if you love it. My sim wave strategy will do the exact same thing I just showed you about bull and bear. However, it will only go with triple red or triple green zones. And if it closes below it, you will not get a long or short on the strategy. That's the difference between the Momo strategy and the sim wave strategy. One has the zones built in where it does not go against these triple red zones or triple green zones. If it closes outside of it like this, it ignores the trade. The Momo strategy is less stringent and it will just go with the oscillator and it will go with a trend filter that I have built in on an uni trend filter. And then the wave indicator, it will go only with zone. If it's red zone, look for red cells and you can put in the bull bear that also where you want to put in where these arrows fire. So if you want these arrows to fire here and it's a red zone, you'll put 65 as your bear on the indicator or oscillator, which I'll show you in a second. I mean strategy and you put your bullet 40. All right, so let's get moving. All right, so we touch base on what we have these order block supply demand lines. I just, I love these because this is the inefficiencies of the market can create opportunity if you know how to trade it. And when you see these supply demand lines on this big gap in the market, that means there's no overhead resistance. These are all low volume nodes all the way up. There's no, there's no, there's no point of control references in the past where it's the most volume. It's, this is the least volume that's been traded in the past. It creates pockets in the market that need to be filled. So that's what I told you this morning that we had this big old order block there. I showed you resistance this morning. I said there, there needs to break through. I said it needs to break that, retest it. It retested the, the order block, and then we got that entry and, and that big explosion. But notice here, look how it stayed above 40 when this arrow actually fired. This arrow fired in the room live this morning. Um, it, it pulled back to 40. But look at this extreme reading here. It is actually above 40. It is actually above uh, 80. You can make your strategy, which I'll show you in a second, you can make it to only take extreme blow-off rallies and sell-offs. All right? So let's get into this. Let's get into strategy analyzer. And, and let's go. If, Phil, if you don't understand how to do the indicator and why we are buying and selling, then we won't know how to do the strategy. Okay? There's a purpose for this. I'm showing traders how, why it works underneath. We need to understand. We need to understand why these are, entries are taking place. We need to understand order flow. We need to understand why that strategy is doing what it's doing. If we do not understand what that strategy is doing, then there's no way you can optimize that strategy. So I thought it was very, very important that we go with the first half hour and let's get the most out of why it, the indicator is doing what it's doing. Because, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, all right, I, I built this strategy, and I'm the one that will know how this strategy works because I built it. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you know how the indicator works and why these trades are coming up, you're going to be able to optimize the strategy to your benefit better. If you just go into the strategy and you know nothing about the indicator and how these trades work in and out, you're doing yourself a big favor. You should know exactly when this strategy will fire. And that's why we did this first half hour. Let's get into strategy analyzer, Phil, but I want to make sure people understand. There's a reason why these fill. There's a reason why momentum is, is in your favor if you use the zones to your advantage. But if you don't use the zones to your advantage, these green zones and red zones, then you're going to have problems with the software. We have to understand that. Shallow retracements create opportunity. You have to get that in your head. Shallow retracements create opportunity because that's when the buy stops sit and the sell stops sit. That's when we get these big order block box and big gap fills. Okay? All right, let's get moving. All right, let's get rolling here. All right, so let's move over here to the strategy analyzer and let's move over to the chart. One second. All right, let's get rocking and rolling here. So... I have three strategies on here right now. All right, so let's go back to some trades that ran. Here's some trades. Here's some trades. Here's some trades. So let's just go back to these trades here, here real quick. Let me scan this down. All right. So as you can tell, what I have, I have three strategies running in the background right now. Now yours is you, you, yours is named different. This is actually the Momo strategy I'm going over tonight. The momentum strategy. The sim momentum strategy. What I'm showing you tonight is where you're going to get this update where it has the bull bear. What you have now, you have hard-coded 
you have a hard coded oscillator into your program now, and you have a hard coded uh, levels in that oscillator. I mean, with that oscillator, and you have hard coded bull and bear for shallow retracements. What I've done is, as I open the code up to you now, you can pick where your bull bear is going to happen. So, depending on the market you trade, some pull back on larger retracements and some do not. So let me just blow this up a little bit. All right, so let's take a look at this. When you first get a chart, now I'm using, I'm showing you a 12020 first of all. Put your start date range when you look at this. Go back to when the contract rolled over. The contract rolled over on the 17th of March. So we're trading the June contract. And that's very important you do because you don't want to do a custom range all the way back to January because there's no volume in the June contract in January or, and so on. It's going to screw up your data. So the start date, whether you do market replay, which we've done in the past, I showed you how to do that. Now I'm going to show you how to do strategy analyzer. Start date, put it to 320. The end date was 427. So the results I'm going to show you. Now, obviously, guys, guess why you guys sign risk disclaimers and so on. We know past performance is not indicative of future results. We're not guaranteeing you that this is going to have the results that when I pull this results up from 320, and I pull this results up here, and I go here, and I hit historic, you know, and I bring this over, and you say, wow, Jay, that's pretty good. Not 89% accurate, 325 drawdown, 11,000, very little drawdown. I'm, you know, that's, listen, that's not guaranteed to do it in the future. You know, this is an automated system. Okay, so, you know, this gives you an idea of the power, power of momentum, though. It shows you the power of these setups. All right, obviously, past performance, what happened on 320 to today's date, taking every single trade, from 1.30 a.m., this is looking at every single trade from 1.30 a.m. Eastern all the way to 4 p.m. Eastern. It took every single momentum trade that I put in under parameters, and it spit out this number. Okay? And I got this based upon strategy analyzer. So you can, you can back test these numbers by doing market replay. You can forward test to do market replay, and also you can do strategy analyzer. All right? And so that being said, this number will change drastically if you just change your ATR. And here is the key to the system. It's your ATR. It's not so much the hard stop. It's these ATRs. So these ATRs here, all right, you have four different ATRs. When it's hitting your first target, you have a first ATR number, which I'll show you. If it breaks below that first ATR, right, which is real tight. See how it's real tight in there? If it closes below that, it sells all four contracts immediately so you take a small loss but as you notice these widen these ATRs I mean these ATR trails widen with price so ultimately you get this last trail that can get a nice run from 4107 all the way to 4142 that's a hell of a trade right from the automation and what was it it was a what the bull I have here which I'll have to look at it I believe I believe I have my bull at 90 and my bear at 10 I have a very, very, looking for only momentum trades. I'll have to see when I open the code up here in a sec. But this specifically is looking for big blow-off rallies. If you look at this oscillator, this oscillator was way above. That was actually above. Let me see the low of that. That's right at 90. So that's above 90. So that took a trade above 90. So if I have 90 as my bull in my code, it's going to take that trade. Will it take this trade? No. I have 90 in the code. Did the oscillator pull back below 90? Yes. We'll take the trade. We'll take this trade. No. Oscillator pulled back too far. Right? We'll take this trade if I had 40 as my bull instead of 90. Yes, because it stayed above 90. It'll take this trade. It'll take this trade. It'll take this trade. Right? Because my bull is my oscillator. It'll take this trade. So you can dictate. I left it in the open code. You can dictate where the strategy buys based upon the oscillator pullback because it will show strength or it will show weakness. Okay? Is everybody on the same page? Give me a why if you understand now. Let's, let's move on. Everybody's starting to get understand how, how you can translate the indicator into the strategy. You can dictate where you want the where you want the strategy to look for bull or bear runs. All right? Hey, hand me a why if we're still following me here. Are we still on the same page? The oscillator on this momentum will let you know on the pullback. All right. Let me know and we, we can move on. Make sure you guys are very clear about this. So if I'm in an uptrend, and you don't even have, I don't even have the trend filter. So these results are with the trend filter off. 
I don't have my zone indicator on here. I don't have my triple zone indicator on here. That's a wave strategy. That's another filter on top of this. So these numbers can be will be different on your wave strategy because you have another three trend filters built into the wave strategy. This is strictly momentum. Okay? You can dictate. So this momentum strategy based upon here is that. Now what happens if I come in here, I'm going to look at my other strategy, take the middle one, or take the upper one this time. Oh, that's the first one here. I'll put these side by side. Let me just do all three, and I'll put them side by side. I'm going to show you the difference. Remember, this is going back to March 20th. We'll put them side by side, and then you can see the difference. I'm going to show you why they're different. All right, so let's put this one here. Put that one there. Put this in the middle. Now, if I go back to the March, so this is looking back to when the contract rolled over, took every trade from 1.30 a.m. in the morning and took every trade, a qualified trade, until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at night, right? And this is, I got these from Strategy Analyzer, which I'm going to show you in a second. These were derived from Strategy Analyzer. This specifically right here I'll show you was Strategy Analyzer. If you look at it, there's my Strategy Analyzer. Get this one off here. If you see that strategy analyzer right there, that was from my strategy analyzer. All right? There's my strategy analyzer. All right? So let's pull that level out, which I'll show you in a second. So what's the difference in this then? All right? Percentages, 97, 89, 86, they're all good. The uh, profit factor, all good. 10, 30, you know, this obviously is a really good one. But if you look at the largest winning trade, um, 2,000 versus 300, 850, 200, 287 versus 12 dollars. So everything looks good, right? Then, then what's the difference? It's looking at the same. It's the same methodology, right? It's looking at the same methodology. You know what the difference is? The difference is two things. The difference is, what do you think the difference in those that that performance? Only changing two things. What, what are they? What do you think they are? Only by changing two things will make that difference. Actually, three things. Third one, not as much. What do you think is going to change that performance? The, the ATR trailing stop, yes, big, big, and what's the other one? What's the other one to fit to where you want to trade in any market? The ATRs are vital. You don't even need a hard stop in because you have trailing ATRs to do the work, which I'll show you. What do you think the other big one is that's going to, that's going to give you that big difference? They're all the same dates. What's the other big thing that changes these numbers? What will change those? Yes, your bull bear. Where are you put your bull bear? Where are you putting your bull bear entries? So that's a big difference. Are you putting your bull bear lines here at 65 and 40? Are you putting your bull at 90 green up here and below 10 cells down here? That's the big difference. So when you're doing strategy analyzer, that's what we want to do. We want to find, so I just ran strategy analyzer, and here's how you want to do it. First of all, strategy analyzer, you do not have to disconnect. You can run it while data is running. You do not need to disconnect. I repeat, you do not need to disconnect. When you come in, Right? When you come in, you can hit new. Go to strategy analyzer. All right? Click it up and it will pop on your screen. You do not need to disconnect. It's going to come up with this sidebar. When you get the sidebar, you want to back test, put it under optimization. All right? Put it under optimization. The strategy, put it under the current strategy that you have, which will be this update I'm giving you where it has the bull bear in it. Now, here's, here's what it is. The updated version you're going to be getting has this bull bear line, the bear line, and the bull line. So, when I ran this to get these results of 95%, four contracts, 7,500, 31 profit factor, $250 drawdown. How did I come up with that? 
Well, with the optimization, you can let it pick what is your best level that you that that according from 320, I mean from 320 to today, was the best combination of these indicators for that particular market. So here's what you want to do. Let's let's go top to bottom. You want to do your bull bear line. Your bull bear line, you put one comma twenty. All right, it's going to look one through twenty. What the best bull bear line is? The bull bear line is this. You want it to stay above your bull for buys and below your bear for sells. All right. In the room right now, I have it at fourteen. That's a fourteen right now in the room. So it'll optimize what the best level is. The bear. Where where do you want your bear set? Do you want your 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 red line? It will take sells anywhere below on the bear, right? So the bear is this. The bear reading will be at the level where you want to look for shorts. So if I'm over here, you want the bear reading as a red line. So if you put 65 as a bear reading, if you put 65 right here as your level under bear, that's the upper red line. So what that tells you is when the oscillator is moving down, I mean the price is moving down and price retraces, if this oscillator stays below and you put in 65 as your level, that red line, is it below the oscillator below 65? Yep. Did I get a red pull-in bar? Yep. As far as the wave strategy, is it below all my zones away from it to give it major momentum below 38? Yep. Is that a sell? Heck yes. Right? So that's your bear. Your bear is your upper line where the oscillator needs to stay below when you want to get pulled in the market. Your bull is the bottom oscillator line where you want to get pulled in. So when I run this strategy and I got and I ran it against this, I got different numbers, didn't I? Why? Because my trail is different on this one and my bull and bear is different on this one. And what I'm going to tell you right now, when you run Strategy Analyzer, you will get different results. Some markets like deeper pullbacks for momentum, and some do not. Okay? So what you can do, I put 1 to 100 to find out what the best bear, best bull. So this one said this. Anything below, uh, uh, anything above 3, I mean sell 3, anything below that is a major sell-off, anything above 92. So what it's saying to you is this is the bulls above 92 bulls above 92 and the bear is below 3 all the way down here according to this strategy look at that that's extreme readings right now you're really extreme now price has to do what it has to stay above here this bull line and get a pull in. That's only going to happen on blow-off rallies. Blow-off sell-offs and blow-off rallies. When, when it sticks above and, and you are really cranking, here, you know, it's got to, they're not, you're not going to get a lot of blow-off trades. Now, if it was this level, if you wanted to put it at 70 or 80, your bull at 80, then put your bear at 20, look at the buys and sells you get. Then you're going to get a buy here because you're above the bull on the pullback with the zone trend. And here you get the sell too. If you didn't have the zone in there, that'd be a sell. You get my point. Wherever you put the bull bear, that's where you're going to get your thing. So on the Momo trade, this would have been a short without the, the Momo is different than the zone. It's without the zone. It shorted that, right? Because you're below your the, the, the blue oscillator is below your 20 but you get my point you see that you can make extreme readings if you want on the way up or way down so you you can dictate what levels you want based upon that bull bear all right so that is a big determination on as far as that goes the trend with this new update I don't use the trend I like counter trades and trend trades with the update you have all right, you currently have the current update members. What I would do is you don't have the bull bear true on off switch down here. So 
this is obviously false, then you want your retracement strength to be closer to zero. Zero to two is the best because that's very shallow retracements. But what the new update does is this retracement strength is, can be, is overridden because when I hit this to true on the bull bear, it's not hard-coded in now. Instead of having a hard-coded retracement strength, you can dictate where you want it, and you can optimize on any market, on any bull bear, where you want it. Okay? So your trend is false here because we don't need I don't need it on this new update. I don't, I don't think we need to have it because it catches the oscillator very good on these bull bears. Um, but you can have it on there if you want. You can have, you don't, if your bull bears toggle switch on, that means it's going to read these readings up here. If it's toggle switch off, then it's going to read the current software you have now. It's going to read the retracement strength, which we did several videos on that, on how to do that. I'm not going to get into that. But if you have this to true, it's going to read where your bull bear is, right here. It's going to read the bull bear. So if you put 1 to 100, it's going to look at all the combinations and come out with the best one according to that Rinko bar. All right? Uh, the targets, listen, you can put the targets anything you want. You can put them all the way out to these all 1,000 ticks if you want. You can put them all the way out to whatever you want. All right, I like 12, 24, 36, 1,000. That's what I prefer. But you can do anything you want. You know, I just plug it in so you can simplify it. Target one, target two, target three. And then with the four target, I started at 40 and it went out to 1,000 ticks. It said the best was 66 ticks as far as this run went. The hard stop, it's going to be the best of both worlds. It's either going to hit my trail first, my trailing stop to stop me out on all my contracts, or it's going to hit the hard stop. Listen, I put the hard stop way out there. If I use a 20 Rico, I put it to 40. Why? Because you don't need your hard stop. Because your trail is going to get you out of the trade, right? Your trailing stop. Your trailing stop is what we need. This is what we need to get us out of the trade right here. This trail. This trail is what we need to pop us out of the stop. Stop. All right? Right here. See how it trailed? Right here, trailed, trailed, stopped us out, stopped us out. So the trail is your hard stop as far as that goes. Um, your start time, that's when the strategy will start trading and it will end trading. When you do the ATR, I would put it at 1 in 100. 1 to 100. Find out what the best ATR trail is. Put the next one, 1 to 100. Find out what the next ATR trail is. Put the next one, 1 to 100. Put the next one, 1 to 100. And make sure this is true, right? Because now what you're doing then, is you really have it, you have, you really have it set. You have it set to look at the all the ATRs and all the bull bears because this is the two most important ingredients here and here, right? And then your obviously your your, your Rinko bar or time frame that you use, and you can use other Rinko bars, minute charts, whatever you want to use, all that stuff. When you hit start. This is very important. You have to understand this. You want to use max profit factor under optimize on. I found this to be the best one. Max profit factor on. This is very important. They have a lot of different ones in here that you can choose from, like minimal drawdown. You know, you have all these different combinations. You can try those other ones. I never had to try them because I had so much success with back testing or max profit factor, I don't even use the other ones. Another very effective way how to do it, okay? Another effective way is you want to put genetic in as your optimizer. You want to use genetic, and I'm going to tell you why. If you do not use genetic and you use the standard default, it's going to take you forever to get your back test results. If you use max profit factor, it takes approximately 25 seconds, which you're going to do in one second, and it's going to run the data for you, okay? It's going to run that data for you. And trails right because that is where your stops going to be and then your lastly would be your targets that's obviously going to those three components are the main components to optimize this to where you want to optimize it okay i like going 24 7 back another very important key feature make sure you put your start date in at 320 that's when the contract rolled over on 317 
and here's today's date. So when I hit run, right, you're going to see everything just go blank. It takes about 25 seconds, all right? So now you got uh, my, my strategy's on. It takes about 25 seconds. Listen, you need to run this. You need to run this over and over and over again on the same bar type. It's going to give you different results until you find the results you want. What it's doing every time you run this, it's finding different combinations that work with the parameters that you put in. Okay? Different combinations with the parameters that you put in. So when you run this, and it's going to turn green here. See how it turned green on the bottom right? Can you guys see that? Hey, can you guys see that at all running? Yeah, your wife, you see that running. I don't know if you can see it on, on the screen. You see it running? You guys understand? Yeah? Okay. All right. So when you run it, you can do the combinations, right? Do the combinations, hit it again. So keep running this, and you can do it. I like running it 10 times per Rinko bar to find the optimal settings that I like. So when I ran these settings and I got these settings, you know, I ran it 10 times. And so I found these settings that I like. And then once you find settings that you like, you can, you can play with that and adjust the ATRs and the targets like you have and fine tune it. But that's a good way to do it. You have set this to only show the best. Yeah, you can set it. Phil, you do it any way you want it. I don't care how you guys do it. But I have it set to show the max performance on the top ones. But you can do it any way you want it. Now, the bull and bear level, yeah, the bull and bear level line, that's your oscillator that's telling you on the bottom. So when you're running this, as you can tell, you know, if I looked at this group, this 83%, I'm going to look at the drawdown right away. This is a big contract of four contracts, obviously. So you see my, my profit factor is still not the profit factor that I want. So I can run it. I keep running this until I find what I want. I want to find the best combination. So I run that. And if I get something in the upper 80s with low drawdown, then I'll start exploring that like this, right? If I come in and it starts seeing that, and these levels I'll have, I'll have these levels also in the PDF. I'll show you these parameters also that I run also in the PDF. I'll, I'll give you guys like four or five set of parameters to start out with and you can play with. So all these parameters I'm showing you tonight, I will put in my PDF for you. So you don't have to write them down. But you can see it takes about 25 seconds to so go, go through. The bull bear line at the top uh, is the oscillator line below, Phil. That's the oscillator line that pulls you in and out of the market. All right. So you see now we're up to 88%. So this is better. 88%, 8,000, 11,000 uh, with the, what, 950 drawdown of four contracts. Uh, 1700 versus 500 so you just keep running it you can run this as many times as you want when you find something that you like and you think it's close to what you want to do per that market and this is just off the 120 20 guys this is not the 135 35 like I'll show you off the you can do on the 135 35 she had to change that or the 130 30 or you can do off the 113 13 or if you trade the Nasdaq futures you can do a one you know 25 25 or one you get pretty good results off the NASDAQ futures on the 140, 40 I, I found. Uh, but, you know, you can do this as many times as you want. You're good to go. Could you show the settings for the three? Yes, I'm going to have all that in the PDF, Phil, all these. Yep. All these are going to be in the, in the, in the PDF. I'm going I'm to give you five settings to start out with, with these pictures of all this stuff. I already got in the PDF. All right, so as you move along, so see, you can, you can keep going through here and see what your drawdowns are and just keep running it. It only takes 25 seconds per thing. Now, um, what you can do, like I said, I'll change this to 135.35 and I'll show, or 135.35, I'll change the Rinko size. You, so you can use still the same, just make sure your hard stop is above your Rinko bar size. Make sure your stop is above the Rinko bar size. That is key. So let's, let's look at this one first. And Gerald will do 135, 35, and then we're good to go. The key is this, though, guys, is the bull bear line where the oscillator is pulling herself in with the indicator. And the key is the trails and then the targets. Everything else is built into the software. So see, it's about 25 seconds. She runs through. 
Now watch, I'm going to put 135, 35, 135, 35. Now what it's going to do is going to look at a different Rinko size, right? So you can you can go through find out what Rinko size is you are because you got one to one hundred already on the, your top trying to find the best ATRs per the, per the targets that you put in. Now the one thing you have to do too is this: if it says there's too many parameters to optimize, it will do this on you because I got a lot of parameters in this this strategy. Then what you do is optimize your ATR and maybe your bull bears first together and leave all your uh, targets in the same, like 12, 24, 36,000, right? So you can do that. So on the, on the 35, 35, it says if I use this strategy, right, if I use this strategy, you know, whoops. If I use that strategy and come down to look at the chart, and then we can see what trades it's taken in the past on a 135.35, and I'll show you, you know, the trades it takes and the trail. So it will select if you use those parameters over here, because you see it spit all the all the parameters on the 135.35, and you can keep running it. Maybe this isn't enough, and you want more than being that selective. You keep running it, and you're going to get different different projections. Yes, the, the bull bear is the D, correct. Yep. You got it, Phil. The bull bear is the D. You are correct. All right. Everybody, uh, so replay this. It's not too hard. We'll, we'll keep going over this stuff. Like I said, you know, we'll keep going over this. And then uh, we, we did market replay in the past. Now we do strategy analyzer. Next week we'll get in a little bit more strategy analyzer. I had to show you why it works in the beginning. It's pretty easy to do. Um, you know, you can go back to 12020, or you can put you really put any type of you don't have to use the Uni Rico bar either, guys. You can put what type of bar type you want and see what type of performance that it would do with that and so on.